Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, we had a wonderful weekend, Chris Frangiola and I, doing shows for my Juicy Scoopers in Sacramento and San Francisco. And it was a really fun show. It combined stand-up with the hot topics. And at the end of the show in Sacramento and San Francisco, I ended with talking about Britney Spears, which I'll get to in a minute. But I just have to tell you the juiciest scoop that happened in San Francisco. So just as we're at the last topic... I hear these people screaming in the first couple rows and moving up and jumping around. And I mean, I'm like, oh, my God, what's wrong? You know, I don't know if there is somebody that's coming to attack them. If someone's getting in a physical fight, it was very scary. And they said, there's a rat. There's a rat running around. And I was like, oh, OK, well, do we know where it is? And I'm like asking the security and the people that work there. And I guess I've never really dealt with like a rat. And so it's not like a bug that you could just squash or whatever and then be done with it. And so they kind of settled down, but then it moved to like another row. So then I continued to try to talk about Britney Spears and it moved to another row. And at this point, I've already, we've already done a show for an hour and a half. So I'm like, well, thank God at least this rat who, you know, was not on my Patreon VIP list. He didn't, he or she did not have a lanyard. Um, so I just was like, I think we just need to end the show. I don't know who sent the rat. I don't know what, the, what was going on with the rat. So um, we ended the show early. Not a little early, but anyway, we got to it. But it was so funny because um, it was really interesting hearing all the different accounts because then when I did my meet and greet, I saw the one girl that originally was scared about the rat, and she's like, it was huge. It was disgusting. When I talked to the first girl, who coincidentally Chris made a joke about because she had her hair, a very pretty girl, brown hair with like a low bun, and she had like a bodysuit on and a tan sweater. And when she got up, because she was the most freaked out by the rat, Chris was like, wait, weren't you the girl on the plane that saw the – the person who was a shapeshifter alien and it really did look like her so that was kind of funny but anyway she said that the rat was a big black rat these other three girls said no it was actually really cute it was gray and little and it seemed scared okay anyway I have heard from some juicy scoopers that they were aware that the theater handled it very humanely they did capture the mouse. They're going to call it a mouse because we don't know if I, how it identifies. We took the mouse and then put it outside, which this theater was beautiful, and there was wildlife and, like, a little pond and released it into the wild. So just so you know. But that was the first time that's ever happened to me, and the people that worked at the um, Palace of Fine Arts Theater said they've been there for 12 years. That's never happened. So leave it to me to have them break history. But um, Chris and I had a great time. I loved my outfit, and that's all that matters. Okay, so getting back to Britney Spears. So Britney, Britney Spears, you know, danced with the knives, okay, which I also did. That was the finale. I had Brandon go out and buy me some fake knives before I left on the plane to go to Sacramento, and I would dance as Britney with the knives. So I still got to do that, even though the rat and the rat got to see that for free. Anyway, or the mouse. So Britney Spears posts this photo of a ballerina on knives, like her toes on knives. And she writes this. Is it a joke in the news again with a welfare check? So I guess they sent over the sheriff's department for a welfare check. They did not see her, but they talked to people that were there and they were, were assured that she is fine. Come on, America. We're cooler than that, right? The officers came to my home and said they would not leave until they spoke to me as people do. Four-minute performances with them. Don't understand that. I'm getting an apology. I've been bullied in my house for so long now. It's enough. 
don't talk about it. Come on, let's do as my mom does the silent treatment when paps ask her questions about her own daughter as if I'm in the wrong. Nope, it's an old game. People need to be responsible for their actions. It's about power for cops. I don't, this was a very hard message to understand. Couple questions. So does she want her mom to talk to the paparazzi or it sounds like she's mad that she doesn't talk to the paparazzi when it's about her own daughter? Um, you know, you could stop the welfare checks by not doing weird shit for your 42 million followers. Like, it was scary. After you had these knives that sounded like real knives, you did have cuts on your body afterwards. She did have a, a something on her, a bandage on her arm and a cut on her leg. And, but I guess they were fake. They were bought at some propped house, like a prop house, and that they've sold out. The, the, the knives I bought from the spirit stores that Brandon got me were plastic so there you go um so i i don't know who these four people are because i heard that the gardener that she was living with who moved in her his ex-wife and children at her house for a few weeks he is out of the picture so i don't know who the four other people are and she did have a ghostwriter apparently help her with the book so that is coming out in october um, I loved Taylor Swift's outfit. She wore these really cute jeans that have already sold out. They're jean shorts with similar boots to what I had on. So gotcha, girl. Um, and she went with Blake Lively and uh, her husband. I can't think of her husband's name. Anyway, they're good friends. Um, I think that um, at least, I don't know if they went to the game, but um, Sophie Turner, who is the ex-wife to be of the Jonas brother that whole divorce has been going on she has now proven to the judge that as a couple they had agreed that their their main home would be in England and she proved that because he wrote a letter to an owner of a house that he wanted to buy saying we love your home we want to buy it this is where we plan to have our children um, be raised and where they go to school so right now they're fighting over where the main home would be like New York or um, the states or England she wants England and she said that was always the plan so she presented that with the court so that was kind of interesting um, anyway I don't know I, I think they won I don't know if they won the game or not but anyway she was there looking cute hugging the mom again in the box oh and Hugh Jackman went new single Hugh Jackman you know he's getting divorced after 27 years and um so it looked like a fun group of people they had the, the good seats um also the U2 um concert went on in Las Vegas at the incredible sphere look it up it looks incredible the concert and Oprah was there and Jeff Bezos and his girlfriend fiance Lauren Sanchez all the stars were there and it looked really cool so that all these things were happening this weekend. Also happening this weekend, Bethany interviewed Nene. It was a two-parter on her podcast. It didn't really get the kind of buzz that I kind of thought it would be. And I think it's because Nene has revealed a lot of that already on um, Carlos King's podcast. And it it was kind of interesting because they're both talking. And you know how Bethany always likes to do like all the analogies where she's like, I didn't burn down the house. I lit a fire in the fireplace. I plan on coming back for a hot chocolate. I don't know when that would be, but I was willing to, to throw the ball and have somebody else catch it outside in the backyard near a pool. That's how we play the game. Like her analogies are just insane. But anyway, so they're talking about housewives and they get in this one moment where they're really kind of bragging about who was the more popular podcast. I mean, who, sorry, who was the more popular housewife and who made more and Bethany's like well we're a little bit different because I I left they begged for me to come back I left they begged for me to come back and that's why they offered me so much money and I made several thousands of dollars se several thousand several millions of dollars that's what I made I made several millions of dollars and then Nini's like you made several millions and she's like yeah didn't you make the same as me and she's like uh not millions I mean I made a million but you made more than one million right I mean I yeah, but did you make several? Well, no, I didn't make several. I made, like, more than one, though. Wouldn't you agree that you did that, too? I mean, it was... And it was really not being that well-received because a lot of people just heard two of the most successful, you know, wealthiest 
housewives kind of boohooing about where their careers are now and how Bravo has screwed them over. Some of the things I thought were interesting is things nobody thought of when the show started, when their show started 15 years ago is, of course, that there'd be all these streaming services, Peacock, Hey You, and other countries where their um, shows would be played and they would not get a dime. But also the merchandise and the memes and their image, like, you know, on stickers and things like that, that they don't get any money for. Um, and Nene really does have the most iconic memes and lines and her voice is used on TikToks and stuff. But a lot of people's songs and voices are used on TikToks and nobody gets money for that. So it is kind of a hard thing to to figure out today. But that was interesting. And then um, she said she and Andy, she realized now we're not very good friends, that looking back, the only time they ever talked was about Housewives and whether she was coming back or not. She only went to one party of, at his house 10 years ago, like a holiday party. And she was invited to his baby shower through Kyle Richards, but she thought it would be, you know, every every housewife trying to show up each other and who is a more popular person. And she didn't even want She just passed on it. Even though she was in L.A. at the time and was free that afternoon, she said, no, I don't want to be around this housewife circus. And I'm like, well, if you were a real friend, wouldn't you have just gone to the baby shower to support your friend who's becoming a parent? Okay. But um, then Nene keeps saying, I've been blackballed. I used to have all these opportunities to host shows, to have TV shows, to have radio shows and podcasts, and they've all dried up. And I think it's basically I've been blackballed because Bravo's mad at me because I have complained, saying I I haven't gotten fair treatment, but mostly the women of color on our cast didn't get the same treatment as the white woman on the cast and all of that. And... So I was like, well, what, she never really says what, where, what specifically did she think she was getting blackballed on? Because she had a pilot to do a talk show with Wendy Williams production company. It wasn't her production company, but the same production company that did her show was going to do a, a talk show pilot with she and Tom Arnold, which I think is a really strange combination. And it didn't go. The pilot didn't go and it didn't get picked up. Well, if that happens all the time, maybe it wasn't a great idea, whatever. You know, you pick, they pick up a bunch of ideas, then they only issue money to do a handful of pilots, and then from there, only a few go. So I was like, listen, girl, all these opportunities came maybe 2014, 2015, those years that you were really, really popular. And you know, there were times right when I come, came off of my TV show, I had more opportunities, and they dried up, and so I built Juicy Scoop. Like, that happens. Even Reese Witherspoon said, I stopped getting the movie roles. That's why I now have this huge production company and give other women, you know, opportunities to direct and act and things. It doesn't, it doesn't always continue, and it doesn't necessarily mean that a group of 10 people got together in Hollywood and was like, let's never hire NeNe. I just think that's stupid. But one thing I do think is interesting that I heard from a very good source is apparently one thing she hasn't said, this is a legend, is that she did have a deal in which she was talking and was very close to closing a deal with doing a show on Sirius. And what this person told me, allegedly, is that she had a conversation with Andy about how she was going to get a show on Sirius too. And he was a little bit like, really? Wow. Oh, okay. They're, they're giving you a radio show? Oh, all right. I'm kind of surprised by it. And then within a week, the deal dried up and they were no longer interested so I think that is suspect that people talk it only takes one person I don't know um and now now big deals aren't being done like that anyway so even if she was to start a show it wouldn't be what she could have gotten three or four years ago in the or even two years ago in the field of podcasting and radio so I don't know what she's gonna do but one thing that Bethany said is she's like I had a great idea for a TV show for you and I to do together. It was going to be called Ebony and Ivory, and you and I were going to go to an in an RV, and I was going to take you to places that, you know, people of color aren't used to going to, like Nantucket, and you were going to take me to, like, pe places in the South. I mean, that moment was pretty cringe. A, that that was the title. B, I, like, I it doesn't even make sense, because I'm like, you're two women— 
and you have a lot in common. You, you should have focused on, okay, well, let's do something because we're two women who have a lot in common. We're wealthy. We run on housewives. We're witty. We say funny lines. I, I think the least interesting thing about the two of you is the fact that you are different ethnicities. And why would you want to highlight on that? No wonder they didn't pick up that show. That That is not because the industry hates you. That is just an awful idea. So those are my two cents. Meanwhile, Kyle, um, so Mauricio was approached coming out of Dancing with the Stars. He is still on the show. They got rid of this actor from Veep. He's the first beat cut. But he didn't do great on his score, but he's around. And... He said, look, I want to know who leaked the story that Kyle and I were separated because we had not announced that. Nobody knew that, but very few people in our inner circle that we were separated and working on our marriage. No one has filed for divorce, but we are, in fact, separated. But I want to know who gave that story to People Magazine because if that is somebody in our inner circle or our employee, I want to know who it is because I want to fire them. Um, that was very interesting. And then they they stopped uh, Kyle at an airport and asked her about it and she's like please it's not interesting yes we are separated we are separated we have been separated very upset and but one thing Mauricio did say is there is no doubt in my mind that Kyle has not slept with or cheated with Morgan Wade they are just really great friends they are filming stuff together they are doing things together they are not in a relationship well we saw the music video I'm going to make you love me. And they said, oh, we just played. Uh, we did this video, and Kyle was in it, and it was about a, a lesbian moves into the neighborhood and is flirting with a housewife, and they get real close, and they feed each other food, and it's very, you know, and they're in a bathtub together and all this stuff. And uh, so I'm like, so is it or what? Or, or was this, like I said, she dropped the crumbs, she got us talking that she and Morgan – had something going on and that her marriage wasn't going that great to get us interested in Morgan's music in which now she is doing a documentary about Morgan and her life and her music and everything. Nobody I know had heard of Morgan Wade before she was seen with Kyle working out and sitting on her lap on a private jet. So, but here she is um, in page six saying that they found her. She was comforted by some friends um, while they were on a hike or something. So it, it, that seems a little suspicious, too, that they found her there, but maybe they followed her off the airport. This is sad, you guys. Everyone loved this couple. Jody Turner-Smith has filed for divorce from Joshua Jackson on Monday after nearly four years of marriage, and I believe they have a child. We don't know why. All the reports are just, you know, pulling up interviews in which they declared their love for each other. Everyone loved them. They were a gorgeous couple. Just sad. Uh, meanwhile, Kim and Croy, Cro Kim tried to get the divorce thrown out. She's like, he filed for divorce. The, she asked the judge, throw it out. Why? Because we're still living under the same roof and we're boning. We're boning all the time. The judge said, no, I'm allowing the divorce to go forward. Because of hardship, you guys can live in the same house. However, he gets the master bed with the with a good mattress because he has, I assume, because he has like some NFL injury. She has to go down to the basement in the maid's quarters and live. They'll share the kitchen. She and Brielle have to share a Range Rover. Um, the I don't know what their other cars are. He only gets forty five hundred a month from his pension. She only declared five thousand a month from some like Instagram clickbait type of a thing, and she did do surreal life. I don't know what they get from that show. I'm guessing not more than a hundred thousand, if that. So I don't know if she gets to keep that for herself. The house is you know upside down and in foreclosure, and uh, she's also it's also was revealed in the court that she has borrowed even more money from her personal friend. She's gambled hundreds of thousands of dollars away, which she can prove over the last couple of years, which he claims is why they're in this financial strait. But they they were getting it on. And I just think that's amazing when a couple breaks up and they're getting a divorce, but they're still sleeping together. To me, I'm like, you should try to make this work. Anyway, people were shocked. This is from the good, the bad, and the fake because he has a beard, Croy, and his hair is dark now. Like, it definitely looks like he dyed it. 
And he looks good, but he just looks unrecognizable. So that was kind of interesting. Also on The Real Housewives of Potomac, Mia and Gordon, she filed for divorce. She's only 37. He's 71. They have two kids together. And, you know, in the upcoming um, season, she's like, yeah, maybe I did marry him for his money. I, I can't remember what their story was, but, it, I mean, it's not a shock. I They are such a huge age difference. And they were having money trouble. They had all these, the joint chiropractic places, and something happened with one of their relatives getting involved or she not being able to run it. So that doesn't help. And then she's on the show and, and feeling her oats. And so, hey, it's I can't even, I would need someone to count up how many divorces have happened in the Real Housewives franchise. Last I checked, it was it was almost at 30, so I'm not sure. Meanwhile, Courtney, the show is on, the Hulu show of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, and there is this fight that is so awful, and they're on the phone, and they fought about Courtney feeling that Kim stole her wedding look with her Dolce & Gabbana lingerie look of her wedding, and... Kim was like, I'm not. They asked me to do it, and that was the look I wanted. And so they are back, and they're on the phone. And Courtney's like, you weren't happy for me at my wedding. You complained the whole time in Italy. You just are not happy for you. And she's like, why would you think so little of me, Courtney, that I'm not happy for you? She goes, you're the one who's not happy. And all your friends think it. We have a side group chat called Not Courtney where we all talk about you and how unhappy you seem and how much you have changed. Well, that was a real trigger for me to think that people that you think are your close friends are talking behind your back. So once this episode aired, some of Courtney's close friends, Simon Huck being one of them, started getting DMs from people like, are you part of this, this text group going and talking shit about Courtney? So she has now confirmed Courtney no, I don't believe any of my friends are part of it. Who's part of it are my sisters. The only people that are part of it are Kendall, Kylie, Chloe, and Kim. So she has kind of protected her friends. But I thought that was awful. And even if it was true, I'm like, what's she supposed to do with that now? Now realize she has no friends either? She already has to deal with you. Anyway, she had her, her um, old-fashioned Disneyland uh, baby shower and... Kim posted a bunch of photos, and she wrote, like, oh, thank you. It was such a beautiful shower. Thank you. For so, of course, they're back together. But this gets people watching. And it was honestly kind of a really interesting thing to talk about because, to remind you, her now husband, Travis Barker, did date Kim Kardashian and wrote about it in his book. And it, it didn't totally say that they boned in the book, but Audrey O'Day had said it. Other people have said it. His wife thought there was more going on, Shanna Mokler, when he was hanging out with Kim. But they were dating, supposedly, on a time that they had a break. So some people feel like it's a real resentment between the two girls because they both have dated the same guy and one ended up marrying him. Does Courtney have a chip on her shoulder about the fact that he was infatuated with Kim years ago and wrote about her? Or does Kim is Kim a little jealous of the mad devotion that Travis has for his sister when she is single and not currently in love so but they do say that she's hanging out with tom brady so that's pretty good real housewives of new york city um this is what they wore for the reunion some people think it's great that jenna lyons who is by far the favorite of this new cast wore jeans wore jeans and you know just a blazer with just like a, a tie and some tits hanging out um but this show was the only thing interesting about this show last night was this girl jessel who hasn't had sex with her husband in a year and a half, was talking about, like, let's have sex, and he still was not really interested, and she wore this lingerie, and he was like, um, okay, we have to do this now? And then she said, oh, yeah, he's going away, she tells Sai. He's going away, he's going um, to Vietnam. He always goes to Vietnam a couple times a year. And she goes, oh, what kind of business does he have in Vietnam? That's kind of weird. She goes, oh, no, he just goes for miles. He just gets on a plane from New York, and goes to Vietnam to collect miles so that we can go on other trips. So the guy that you're never having sex with, who's your husband, happens to go to Vietnam a couple times a year to up his status on United. So um, Sai thought 
that was weird. And also, Sai and she are still competing with who had the saddest childhood. All these people, this whole season is about who had a sadder, more depressing childhood. And they're going toe for toe about it. Um, Real House of Salt Lake City was fantastic. It was great. It's everything I wanted. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but Meredith has a caviar line. That's right. I have a caviar line. Seth and I love caviar. And I have a pearl spoon that you could buy with it. She really hasn't pushed it yet. So I, I predict there'll be a party celebrating this caviar. And I don't know. When I think of caviar and the people that really know caviar, I wouldn't think that it would be someone in Utah wearing a Brooks Mark sweatsuit while she separates the um, the eggs from the fish. I, I don't know. But I did see her eating it at the Trixie Motel. And I do feel like caviar is the new thing that housewives are pushing. It used to be Pinot Grigio and wines and alcoholic drinks. Now it's all about caviar. And you really can't make it at a cheap level, though. Like, even this is a small thing. It's like $400. So who knows? Um, but they did not want to get ready in the Trixie Mattel makeup and hair. Only a few of them did. And Meredith is like... I have a splitting headache. How dare you, Whitney, weaponize a small child's illness because I didn't want to wear drag makeup. And then um, and then uh, Lisa Barlow was like, I don't want to. I don't like that for me. I don't want to wear the makeup. I don't. I brought my own makeup artist, and she could do like a bright lip, but I don't. I don't. And then they show Meredith getting her makeup done from the girl that she brought, and the editors did a photo, uh, like the light coming in, and it was so not flattering to beautiful Lisa. And I definitely think they were doing her dirty. They think that they're not happy with her this season. Maybe they felt they really wanted her to wear the Trixie Mattel makeup, and they're like, oh, we got you, girl. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Have your makeup, girl. Do your own pretty makeup, and you don't participate. Can we just film you while you do it? Not nice. And then Mary, of course, didn't participate in anything. And she was like, mm. well, I'll tell you something, little girl. I don't want to do the makeup either. She didn't do the makeup either. So there you go. Now, you guys, I'm, ex I'm just excited. I'm going to get right to it. Let's ha enjoy our guest. This is such a fun book that I'm going to tell you all about. It's the Real Housewives Ultimate, Ultimate Trivia book. But so much juice I'm going to get from my next guest about Hollywood and back in the day when she worked for J-Lo uh, and Julie Roberts. So here is a real fun interview with my friend Thea. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a fun one for you. I have the book that you're going to want to buy for yourself, for your friends, for everybody. I have Thea de... Say your last name. Souza. <laughs> Thea de Souza. She runs a really great Instagram account that I've talked about called Your Moms Are Watching... But she came up with this book, The Real Housewives, The Ultimate Trivia Book. I already started to do it. The first chapter is Orange County. I've gotten 100%. <gasps> this is so fun. How are you? Welcome to Juicy Scoop. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So uh, give me a little bit of a background of your, your Hollywood background, how you got into The Housewives, and the thought about this book, which is, is going to be a huge hit. So I was a development girl in Hollywood. So that means you find projects for producers to act in, direct, whatever. I mean, actors to produce, whatever. So I worked for Julia Roberts and Jennifer Lopez. Now, I, what years were this? This is all leading up to 2001. So I started in Hollywood in 1998 as Mike Myers and Keanu Reeves' assistant. And then I went to... I was did talent for a year, so I worked at the at Three Arts. They represent. Oh God, Mike Three Myers. Arts was such Chris a hot Rock. spot. So I was Erwin Stoff's assistant. So he's okay. the president of the company, and so I worked very hard for those actors. And I was like basically their assistant, you know, going to get Keanu a can opener, you know, all that stuff. Is Keanu still, in your opinion, the nicest? guy in Hollywood. Yes. My friend Jeanette has worked for him for 25 years, so I know all about him, and he couldn't be nicer. He could not. So I just sent a TikTok to my husband because I, th I just thought it was so funny, and someone did a TikTok on all the photos that he's taken throughout the years where he won't touch the women's backs. Oh, I've seen that so TikTok. So it's like a little bit... He's just too respectful to even put his hand... How and amazing. he's too smart. Yep. 
he's very too, smart. he's too smart because even just doing that, someone could then do a TikTok about. So here's my picture with Keanu and like look at his hand and and they're taking pictures so fast and oftentimes these guys don't mean to to grab a a right. side tit He's but it happens. Nice. When yeah. I worked for him, he had just done um, The Devil's Advocate and he was about to do The Matrix and I literally Heather he called me up one day. This is Keanu to a T. I don't do impressions like you do, but he's like, "Dear, it's me, Keanu." I was walking down the street and this guy comes up to me and he's like, Keanu, that acting in The Devil's Advocate was amazing. I mean, I never really thought of you as an actor. <laughs> and then he's like crying to me. He goes, what does that mean? He didn't think of me as an actor. And I was like, well, Keanu was complimenting you. He was, yeah, but he said, this it's was this was the first time I've ever seen you act. And I was trying to explain to him how that's a compliment because you're just yourself and your movies. And he was like practically crying. He was it's, it's, it's an amazing, the backhanded compliments that come um, <laughs> in this business right. from honestly real fans. They just don't realize it. Right. Um, I just had someone tell me who is definitely well known that he, he said, you know, this guy thinks he's being a friend, but he, I heard him on his podcast and he's like, this person, his name is the funniest person that is not known. And he's oh, like, no. oh, I think I am a little bit known. <laughs> like known. I, yeah, it's always that kind of I'm thing. I'm not a nobody. Right. Yeah. That is really funny. Right. Yeah. He's very sweet. So he's very sweet. And he was at the time, his girlfriend had just um, died. Uh, his sister had leukemia and he was taking care of her. He was living in the Chateau Marmont, but we moved him into a house so he could take care of his sister. I'm just like, who are you? He was just the sweetest for sure. So uh, everyone always asks me, who's the nicest person you have ever worked for? And he's like, beyond. I, th I think I also saw like a funny like fake news report like funny meme that was like and in you know in shocking news or something like keanu reeves still continues to be the nicest person in hollywood I don't like even, he's just in not, unshocking news or he's something. not yeah. a cele like the way that he acts is not a celebrity because even the nicest celebrities still have to put walls up and you know right. just for the protection like julia is a nice person but she's so protected and so scared of getting screwed over that she, you might think she wasn't nice but Keanu doesn't care. He's got now, no walls, and he's just the sweetest. With Julia Roberts, were you with her during the breakup with um, Kiefer ben Sutherland? Benjamin. So she, she was, was breaking with, up with, with ben. Benjamin. Has she won the Oscar? Mm -hmm. I started the day after she won her Oscar. So she won the Oscar on a Sunday night, and I started working for her on Monday. Do you think she regrets... Wearing that weird 1960s <laughs> hairpiece no, to she win never her Oscars. Regrets anything. I regret it for her <laughs> because I feel like that, you know, she's so known for her hair. Right. The big, to this nice, day. Right. And whether she straightens it out or wears it curly or whether it's more blonde or more red, she just has that hair. Right. And I feel like at those monumental moments in your life, that's just not the time, like your wedding day, to like try a weird look. Same with Kate Hudson. Remember when she was nominated? Right. Did she win? I don't know, but she wore this like weird... You know, and the hair was cur like a weird curly that she didn't do. And she wore like this weird outfit. And I'm like, you just should have worn, you know, like your flowy blonde hair and like a six sexy, like slinky dress. It's well, just Heather, you know how it is. They are not making these decisions. Her right. team is making all the decisions. Julia, actually, of all the people I've ever worked with, cares the least about her appearance of anyone. I will never forget walking down Fifth Avenue with her. Two days after she won her Oscar, she had like a banana clip in her hair and a jean jacket. And not one person even blinked. And because she doesn't do glam, nothing. Yeah. She's very guys, girl. I don't need that stuff. So I bet you a million dollars she didn't have any input and didn't care. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy. How could you not care what you look like? But she doesn't. I have a theory that the biggest stars from the 90s, she, right. Pamela Anderson, it's because they had such great n lips teeth and smile Naturally. which back then couldn't be mm -hmm. recreated so you come across someone like a pamela anderson perfect teeth smile or her and you're like that's a star because it's right. because you didn't see it on everybody so true. now speaking of the housewives you know everybody has the big giant right. pearly whites and they look i think they look good on people i mean i know some people think people go too far but when you look at the previous teeth and you look at the post housewife teeth I'm sorry it looks better. 
I feel like women carry it off better than men. Men sometimes when the glaring veneers come out and I'm like, whoa, what the? That like kind of shocks me a little yeah. bit. Just the fact they went through that kind of trouble and then they just like don't blend as well as with the women. Women, I feel like they are doing other stuff and it's all getting blended and men just like walk out and you're like, whoa, new teeth. <laughs> getting back to Julia, I do have some questions. So were you working with her when she started to date her now husband who yes. was married to the makeup artist Vera or Vina? What was her name? Uh, Vera. Vera. Um, can you give us any scoop on that? I mean, now listen, it obviously worked out. They've been together 21 years. They have two kids. But it was a scandal, and it's all, you can look it up in the tabloids. I'm not bringing up anything. that. Right. And she wore, like, a shirt that said, hello, Vera. I know. And she was a makeup artist that actually lived very close to where we are right now. Right. And I knew, this is kind of juicy. So I knew a mom back when our kids were little who was a writer, then she was just a mom, and she wanted to get back in writing. And she knew her. And she wrote a fictional book from, like a fictional story about this from no. from her opinion of what is it like when you're kind of below the line, which is what we call people in the industry that are the prop master, assistant, the stunt man, the assistant, right. the camera, right. and her her guy was a cameraman, right. not a director, no. a cameraman, like a worker that lo- that gets trained. A lot of them are grandfathered in. Literally, their grandfather was part of the union, whatever. And she was a makeup artist, and they had a n- nice life living in, like, a middle-class nice home in Woodland Hills. Right. And then they he met her on the set, I guess, a and me- they fell Mexican, in love. Yeah. And they didn't have any kids. Not that that, you know, makes it any less devastating. I don't want to be like Bethany Frankel, who said that Ariana shouldn't be so sad because she didn't have a kid with Tom Sandoval. But... So she wrote this fictional book that was published and stuff. I don't really know that it made it, but it was kind of a juicy. Did people know that that's what it was about? I think she just, like, I was on Chelsea lately at the time, and she, and I I remember, okay, speaking of this, okay, I remember, like, I was like, oh, my God, you finished your book. And I'm on Chelsea lately, and she's like a mom at the school, right? I'm like, you finished your book. That is so great. You know, let me know if you want me to post about it. This is before Instagram, but there was definitely Twitter. We were like hot on, all of us were hot on Twitter. And we'd like post about on Twitter all the time, the Chelsea Lately people. And she goes, okay, this is how you can buy it. You got to buy this link, which is fine. But I was kind of like, why wouldn't you have dropped one off at my fucking doorstep? Like, I live down the street from uh, you. She was, she I know was she wanted like, to buy a sale, and I'm not being, I'm not, and I'm not you. being right. like okay. cheap about right, it. No. I'm just saying, like, if you want somebody to promote your thing, right. make it really easy no, for them. Of course. Send it to them, hand it to them. You know, I know you may, maybe, but it's, it's not about the $8. It's just about me going, okay, wait a minute. Now I've got to get my purse, get my she credit card out, <laughs> go get the thing. And I honestly say, it, I think I maybe never read it. Now I'm kind of curious. To read it. Well, here's my experience. I remember I was at her office. I'd only been there a month or two. And I was given um, a camera, the old cameras, the, the disposable Yes. those days? And I had to bring it to the photo op place. And I one had hour to, photo. I had to pull it off the machine myself. Nobody else was allowed to because they didn't want anyone to see the pictures of her and Danny doing the tequila body shots off each other. Oh. I pulled the pictures off myself. They said no one can look at these. And I was like in a cab with these pictures in my hand. But like, she just sh- wanted them for her memories. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. And I was like shaking because I was like, at this point, the speculation was everywhere. Like, who is Julia going to date next? Like her and Benjamin are over. Who is the next guy? So we had people calling our office. Oh, had you know, I want to set Julie up on a date with this person and that person. And here I am with these photos that she was already dating someone, but no one knew yet. And I was because she had just broken up with Benjamin. So it was clear, yeah. clear there was an overlap. And I would just never forget that and thinking like how many millions of like a million. I could have made a million. Let's be honest. A million. Probably back in those days when it was like a hard photo that the tabloids would pay for. Right. I right. might have gotten a million. And he's married. And they're doing tequila body shots. And her and Benjamin had just broken up, and the pictures were not from, they were from a little before. I was like, this is major, but I never, I, had somebody, I never gave them to anyone. I had someone just call me and be, be like, oh, I've got some, you know, I've got a major story and a major celebrity, whatever. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, do you want to tell me now? And I can evaluate, like, if I want you to come on the show or not. And if you say I can't share it, then I won't share it, whatever. Right. 
And he's like, well, I'd like to get paid for this. I'll be honest. I want to make some monetary money from it. I go, well, I don't pay for stories. Out of curiosity, I'm like, so you should go to like TMZ or something. Right. Out of curiosity, what are you thinking of making? Because <laughs> you're going to make $250. He said a million. No, stop. And I go, definitely not. That. He goes, well, what about seven fifty? I'm like, no. What not even like, close. What about like a couple hundred? I'm like, no. And also your scoop isn't. And then when I found out what the scoop was later, because we still talked, and I, it wasn't anything. It no, wasn't anything don't. like definitive. I'm like, we already think this person might be doing drugs, and you're saying they are. Right. So Great. Like, like that's five hundred. Like, I, mean, I would like, give them five hundred. Yeah, it's not like you have like right. a person in office or something that's like doing lines of cocaine off, like you know, or whatever. <laughs> and then you're like, here's the photo, and here's the scoop, and we brought in three young boys, and like, I mean, something that would be scandalous about somebody. No, I'm no. like, yeah, not a scandal. These are not the days where you're making yeah. a million, but back then for a picture because it because was, that was the only way to get the scoop. Yeah, right. And no one, there was no paparazzi, whatever, like it is now. It was a big. You know, this is obviously 2001. This it was. It would have been a big deal. That's yeah, that's why they had me pull them it. off. There's yeah. a reason they didn't want the Photoshop person to see them. Right. And I just like brought them back to the office, and I was like, well, there goes my million dollar chance. I'll just take my thirty five thousand dollar year paycheck from you, Julia, and move yeah. on. <laughs> So, um, so then how did that, uh, job, what did you do after that? How long? So you were just there for a couple of years? Yeah, I was there. Um, and then were you there when they got married? No. Okay. I was only there for a year because, um, 9-11 happened and we all spent that together. I worked on Made in Manhattan. So, oh, where were you in 9-11? At Elaine Goldsmith Thomas's apartment. Like we were working. You were in New York. Yeah. I was in New York at the office when it happened. <sighs> Julia lived two blocks away. She's doing aerobics with like headphones on. Aerobics. Like, that's yeah, a word. Through her TV. And we're all just like, um, we got to get Julia out of Manhattan. So we bought her an Escalade. We filled it with supplies. We got her out. Tim Robbins worked with us and he came up with like gas masks. He's like, the bridges are going to blow. And we're all like oh putting God. gas masks. It was like a whole thing and the whole day was about getting julia out of manhattan because they're targeting these celebrities and the bridges are wired and these crazy conspiracies so i spent the morning getting her out of town and then i walked up to elaine's apartment our our boss elaine goldsmith thomas who now produces with jennifer lopez she was our you know the head of revolution studios east and we walked to her apartment 80 blocks me and like the interns and the staff and her assistants oh i remember that revolution studios right revolution east i worked with rachel horovitz who is adam horovitz's sister she's a producer she's amazing so because um i went out for um i was up for the talk show that jennifer was producing that her sister was going to be it was going to be like the younger view right or the hipper view right before the talk the view had been out the talk had not come out they were going to do this show and it was going to be jennifer's sister what is her name jennifer lopez's sister yeah do you remember i don't know i remember anyways starts with a c right i don't know it was jennifer lopez's sister And then, like, three, you know, there'd be three or four of us. Oh. And I, I, I tested, and I got the, the offer, and it was like, you know, you, you had the offer before you test. Right. So then it's like, if you get it, this is what you'll make. Right. And anyway. And it never even happened. I think they did the pilot, but they didn't pick me, right. which is usually what happens. And um, <laughs> But I remember thinking that was like, you know, kind of, I thought it was a good idea, and I liked the sister. I thought she was cool. And I think that's when Jennifer was trying to do, you know, produce things and stuff. Right. Like for yeah, the family. Yeah, and then Elaine went on to become her producing partner from Julia. So she, Elaine was Julia's agent. She discovered Julia in the bowling alley with, with um, the boyfriend, the sleeping with the enemy guy, Patrick. What's his name? Sleeping with the enemy. Remember Julia's first boyfriend? Patrick something. Wait, sleeping? Wait, hold on. Jason Patrick. So Jason Patrick. Wait, she discovered Julia? So wait, yes. Julia so hadn't even done the nothing. Mystic Pizza yet? Nothing. She gave her, she got her Mystic Pizza. Oh. Julia had a, wanted to act. She had a boyfriend named Jason Patrick who did movies. Julia had never done anything. And, and but Jason, her mom ran an acting school in right, Georgia, but school, right? Right, yeah. that's not. Jason brought Julia to bowl with his childhood friend, Elaine. In L.A.? No, New York, New oh. York Brooklyn, whatever. They were all in Brooklyn. And Elaine said, who's this girl? I swear in my life. And then Elaine, she was working at William Morris. Elaine was an agent, brought her in. Elaine completely discovered her, got her Mystic Pizza, like completely discovered her in this bowling alley as Jason Patrick's girlfriend. That's the story. And then she was her agent for 25 years at William Morris. And then she went on to be her producing partner and then left and went with J-Lo. Because we did Made in Manhattan with J-Lo. So I worked with Jen like 
all day, every day for three months. It was amazing. Isn't it so interesting, like, how it really can just be, you know, what, like you just really can some, what sometimes back in those days kind of be discovered. And you didn't go through the Yale acting school. Right. And you didn't then get commercials. And then was on a soap. And then got a sitcom. Right. And then got the movies. I kind of feel like what's what's interesting is like, you know, especially being a young person, you either get right into like the movie world, the A, the top of the pyramid. Right. Uh, otherwise, it's very hard to jump. No, you're just. It's very hard to jump. But everybody for... says, well, start with a commercial agent. You know, this back in our days, starting a commercial agent first. And then, no, it's like you've got to like get right in there. Right. And, and then hope you get lucky that someone says, oh, you have something. I mean, I today, mean that's where like nepotism and who you date, who you date and who you, and know. who you know really is true and so it, you know it really but it's still it really does now, help. the trust thing as you know is big now even now yeah because if you know someone already then you can be you're in the circle yeah. So dating or co-worker or someone that used to work you wish to work with like they're the circle of people you trust and that's what you're going to use and so she was in the circle from being his girlfriend so it wasn't some rando that you can't count on you just right i right. feel like even now it's the same i as all the celebrities i know they just stay with the same people because it's all about trust we're not going to hire some new person that just you know sent me the resume on the internet like if it's your brother or your cousin or whoever i'm gonna hire them because you know them and because people... and i think it's the same thing with every industry i say right. that too like when people talk about nepotism and everything i'm like yeah and if you're you know, and if your dad and your grandpa were plumbers and they have a really successful plumbing business, mm -hmm. like you're you, gonna, you right. probably are going to want to be a plumber, and then like, and you're probably going to hire your high school friend to work at the you know, plumbing place. Right. Like, like I mean, it does happen yeah. in other industries where it is about knowing people, and it isn't just finding someone blindly. And even you, Heather, you use a lot of the people on here that you've worked with before because you know them and you know they're right. solid and they're going to give a good show. And I mean, you took a chance on me today, but. Usually, you are, and so people could say, oh, you know, it's just the same people, but it's because you trust them. You know what they're going to give you, and that's important. Right. When you're creating content, you don't want some firecracker. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come on and blow up your show. No, I'm not going to. Um, okay, so then you, you worked with J-Lo. Were you with J-Lo during any of the Ben Affleck season one She was with Chris. One Chris and her were married, and he was with her every- Chris the dancer. Yes, every second Husband of the day. number one. Yes, he was with okay. her every second. Every, all the meetings we had, Chris would be like with his big sneakers up on the thing, like stretch out, giving us, you know, just not speaking, but like Jennifer, me, Elaine, Julia, whoever. And he would um, just be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was very, very good to look at. Like his skin glowed. Like he was so. But he wasn't the at. Wait, she had a husband before that. Right. She had the waiter. Right. Then this she had Chris the dancer. Chris, this is Chris the dancer that okay. she was with during Made in Manhattan. Okay, and he was very lovely to look at. He never spoke, but he was so just like sitting there, and we were all just like look at him once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that might have been the role he played in her life. Just hang out, look great. Right. But he they, he came everywhere. It was hilarious. Like anything we did, he was there, just not talking. And then who was? And then um, and and did you enjoy working with her? Oh yeah, I love. She's the kind of person that would come, Jen, we call her, would come to the office and like give you stuff that people had sent her and be like, oh, would you like this, you know, box of product clothes? I'm not going to use them. And you're like, what? Yes, I would like that. She invited But do you us. think that's better than the way Bethany does it, goes to TM Mac, T TJ Maxx and films the person and it's already <laughs> been used? I mean, Bethany. Is... I mean, Jen, Jen, we didn't, I mean, J Lo wouldn't. No, it was that. never used. It was never open to see what color it was or whatever the reason those things were already. I don't even get why those things were used. Like if someone sends you product and you don't want them, you give them. But the weird thing about that whole story was how she said, I just open it for a second to look at it. That was strange. Why are you opening it if you're not going to use no, it? No, she did say she used it. Oh, But she well, didn't disgusting. use a lot of it. <laughs> okay, but if you're putting something on your lips, you don't give that to a person. There's bacteria. There's germs. In this day, post-pandemic world, what are we giving people something you've used? Right. That's unsanitary. But she would do that, which is nice, which is great. Jennifer would never. I do that, too. I'm always like, do you guys want this? Right. Jen would whatever. never Sometimes. use the stuff. Well, she okay. didn't need to. You know, unlike Bethany, she, yeah. she did not need to be using things and buying things for yeah. herself ever. Nobody bought any. Jennifer and J-Lo never bought it. I mean, Julie and J Jennifer never bought anything for themselves, like, ever. You know, we bought it. Oh, okay. I mean, perfume, your favorite perfume, this. Like, we got it. They didn't, they're not at the stores. Yeah, they're not shopping at the <laughs> However, I saw J-Lo at Saks in Beverly Hills. 
Amazing. Just in the last five years. Just and we met around. before, and she was lovely with like a couple people. She, I really, I mean, I think she was maybe stopped there by to get something after or whatever. <clears throat> just wanted to go. I mean, it's a beautiful store. and um, Yeah, no, I'm sure they shop. So I'm just stunning. saying they're not at Target, like um, giving makeup yeah. to people. Yeah, she's stunning. <laughs> That's another level. Too. We'll put Def- Bethany here on the level, and then, you know, there's Jen. Jen's not going to Target. Um, so you weren't there during the Ben Affleck years? No, not at all. Um, was not there, but obviously Elaine has worked with her closely all these years, and I'm yeah. close with Elaine, so I, I get a lot of the scoop of the Ben. I heard the Ben. This is my favorite quote. Um, from someone in the inner circle about Ben and Jen. They said the first week that they were back together, they had more sex than Jen had with um, A-Rod in the entire marriage, or entire engagement. Like, the, since she knew A-Rod, I think they dated for three years, she had more sex with Ben that week. And I was like, enough said. <laughs> I totally believe that. <laughs> also, because when they got back together, I'm like, I think this is, like, awesome. Because yeah, only J-Lo could hook up with a guy that she dated 20 years ago and be like, I'm more gorgeous now That's than true. I was 20 years ago. And I'm, you know, and I've I've always been very attracted to Ben Affleck. So I, I like that He's they're- He's very tall. Have you met him in person? He's very I've, tall. The tallness I gets went, me. I went to a premiere that he was doing. Um, so I did get to see him like standing there. No, it's the height. Uh, Cause I've met him. I met with him at, and I was an executive for, at Fox for, for Harold Ramis. They came in to pitch me a movie and they pulled up in this blue convertible antique car. How like on brand, the two of them, they jump out. They're right in front of my window, my bungalow. They jump out of the car, they're the convertible and they come in and we had this amazing meeting and they were so animated, but I was very swoony over Ben because he was just like, tall and I don't know like he looks like he could just like wrap his arms around you I was yeah very, I was very into him not Matt but I was into him they just did uh, some like exclusive photos and it's just them in a car <laughs> I think she might be driving I don't know um or no no he'd be driving and she's just there and she's looking straight ahead and he's like and you know they're snapping it and they're like oh my god what is this about it must they must be arguing <laughs> You have because, to get a lip reader. The yeah, lip reader. I, I love they, the lip readers. Well, it was just, I don't even think it was video. It was just like a snap. Mm-hmm. And they must be arguing because he's been co-parenting so with, well with Jennifer Gardner. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like anybody and then you cares. Read, you read the whole thing. They're like seen um, driving around in L.A. In Friday, on Friday. I'm like, Friday L.A. traffic? That's why they're not smiling. Like it has <laughs> nothing to do with jealousy or whatever. No. But we do enjoy talking about of that course. and I do I love it. you know and I think they I don't think she necessarily minds it like sometimes I think in my opinion she and and Jennifer Garner too go out and engage with paparazzi where it's they weren't you know um, shocked to see them on the corner is what I'm saying of course of course the, yeah the, the tender moments because then we see them you know on the red carpet and they're definitely arguing and then immediately you'll see the tender moment a few days later from right like, at know. the Dunkin Donuts yeah like yeah. oh how did we just happen to you know that yeah well tell us a little bit about how you decided to do this book and explain it a little bit to us because it's so fun there's all this great art it's all different um, quizzes, right. so you can really play with your friends or play by yourself right. with the answers on the bottom. And um, so tell me a little bit about So this book actually it. ties into Julia Roberts, because when I went to work for Julia, I was a story editor, and the gentleman who was the story editor that I was replacing, I met him briefly. A story editor for what? Julia Roberts, True Lace Productions. Oh, her produ- so you'd read scripts that came in and yeah, stuff? Yeah, okay. I was her story editor. So I was replacing a guy named Mark, I'd never met him before, and I, at the time, was writing this big gossip column for um, Warren Zai to produce American Pie. So he had a website for American Pie, and my blog was on there. And it was a big blog. It had, like, 500,000 subscribers. And it was anonymous. And I would just um, talk about Hollywood and our, like, d- you know, development. Now, goal. I have to say, now, while you have this job, did they not know that you had this blog No, going? they love my blog. Julia bought my blog to make into a TV show with Darren Starr. They love my blog. What was it called? It was called D-Girl Diary. They did a Wait, huge, I remember uh, this. Everybody knows D-Girl Diary. So what happened with the show? Well, 9-11 happened. Darren Starr took me to the season, the finale of Sex and the City at Lincoln Center because I was his new, like, Candace Bushnell because of my blog. Right. It was amazing. And I had a book deal with HarperCollins, and they were going to make it a TV show, and I was, like, on the development slate at my company. It was so great. So um, I wrote this blog in Hollywood, and it was anonymous at first, and then um, for Warren. And then they, um, Anna David did a 
big spread on me in Premiere Magazine that had pictures of me to out me. And it was funny. It was just like, this is the girl, everybody. Like, all the guesses that you've all had is not right. This is her. I'm pretty sure you don't know who, she, who her, know her. But I would write all the inside. Not most, not like trashing celebrities. It was really like the us, the development people who sold the drugs, who did the, you know, I just used different names. And then I would talk about, like, Jennifer Aniston's birthday party that we all snuck in the back window and the Sundance, you know, the we all, like, you know, went through the garage. Like, how we would get into all these crazy well, parties. you say, like, you know, we don't know. Oh. How did so you do it? So, I, because my best friend and I had a saying, if we know the address of a party, we're going. So the whole guest list and all that, whatever, you would go. Uh, half the time, as long as you know that it's going on, they'll let you in because right. you know you're there. You're in the hills. You're at the house. And if we didn't, like, for Jennifer Aniston, it was at some bar on Sunset, and we went up to the front, and they had closed the party because it was over capacity. You know, the fire marshal gets out there, and my friend gives the fire marshal $100, so he lets us in. And then in Sundance, there was a big party for, um, it was like Blues Traveler was singing, blah, 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 you know, the 90s. And we literally went through the back, a window through the garage. My friend and I snuck through the window to get into the party. Everybody was there. It was like Cameron Diaz and but still everybody was and there. And then you'd write about that in right. the blog. In my blog. So how do you feel about the Dumois? Now, Dumois I, my supposedly followers has all on, these deals and stuff for TV shows and stuff. And nobody knows who she is. I've right. been on her show, so I have talked to her on the phone. I believe she had the weird voice thing when I did it. Yeah. And um, what is your opinion of, of how she does it? I mean, all my followers say that I'm like the 90s Dumois. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got all the tea. It's just from the 90s. So if you care about the 90s, come to me. I call it Juicy Scoop History. Right. Juicy and, Scoop uh, History, exactly. Yes, and eventually I, I plan, I've been manifesting that I will be teaching a class one day at USC. I will be a salaried professor. Right. Love it. Doing either Real House... Wife's history, juicy scoop history. It'll be a combo class. Well, um, she, I definitely feel like I bring the history to my followers. But yeah. So I do like Dumas. She's reposted me a bunch of times. So we have a rapport. Yeah. She gave me her book, uh, autograph book for a giveaway I was doing, and so she's nice. What, whoever, it's two, I think, aren't they? Or I think it's two, two girls. Oh, is that the secret? Is that why it's called Dumas? It's two girls. Um, I don't know if they're still doing it together, but it's for sure two girls. Oh. I, I can see the picture of their faces in my head, who they really are. I would never say their name because I actually don't remember. But they're people in Hollywood, inside Hollywood, know who they are. Oh, okay. So they do get real scoop from real people. But a lot of it is just sharing an anonymous right. uh, DM right. on their stories, which I sort of have uh, like a little bit of a moral issue with. That's why I don't really cover it. I think it's kind of interesting when somebody sends it to me. They're like, what do you think about that? I'm like, mm, that's interesting. It informs but, you, but you're not yeah, going to post I'm, it. Right, because and I'm not going to report on it because I'm like, literally someone could write it could be a DM. It could be and they're like, I saw Heather making out with Thea at HQ right after it was this day, which they I know they just recorded their show. So they went over there. They had three margaritas and they were making out. Anonymous, please. And it's just not true. Like, it's not true. But it could it, be it, true. But the day be, is young. Right. The, <laughs> but I'm saying it could be true. And there's enough facts that you're like, oh. And it then it gets in your head. Right. And then I'm like, and now forever, when two people see us together, they're going to be like, oh, I always remember that rumor. You know, like the gerbil up Richard right. Gere's. Well, the know, way butt. Bravo and Cocktails does it, and I don't know if Dumont does it the same way, but I assume probably partially is. Okay. She knows a source, and it's usually a big one, like a housewife. And, and then turns posts. it into a blind that's from oh, a, okay. because it's based on real info, and Bravo and Cocktails wants to get that info out there, but she can't say, like, oh, you know, uh, Teresa gave me this. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, I have a friend who went to the party. No, it's not. No, there's not a oh. friend. It's so a lot of them are fake, but okay, they're that's real. Good. So that's why a lot good of hers know. do turn out to be true. Yeah, I like Bravo and Cocktails be too. Yeah, yeah, because they turn out to be true because she got it from a real person she just can't say that and they they want to disguise the fact that it came from them so they'll pretend like it's someone else but that's a lot of them and that's why her info is good and i've done that too i have gotten tea from i know exactly who i'm getting it from but i will i will try to change it so it doesn't look like it's coming from them i'll be like oh i got this uh, random tip i'm from this i don't know who this per it must be a finsta but it's not it's that person so i know it's right. true so i don't do blinds a lot either because i don't trust them and i've been burned before a bravo a blog a bravo page sent me false tea so I'd post it to make me look bad once and I'll never forget it. Wait, wait, what did you do? A Bravo page that doesn't like me sent me tea and was like, oh my god, you should post this, it's amazing. And I did and she did it on purpose, it was not true. 
It's fine. I don't care. Oh, my God. And I ever sent that. I was like, nope, I'm not taking tea unless I know who you are. I'm not just going to post whatever. So right. So now I have to know who it is, and then I'll disguise it for them so no one would ever know where it came from. Yeah. And so that way I can really rely on what I'm posting. Like, my followers know 90% of what I post is 100% true because I'm talking to this person on the phone who is on The Real Housewives. So it's yeah. true. I just can't say it came from them. So I say it. I just word it. And I feel like I know Bravo and Cocktails does that. And if Dumas is smart, they do that, too. Yeah. It's just, you're not, you think they Well, built, like, I, I kind of go with um, this is my theory and this is my opinion. Oh, right. And... You know, and I do have those as well of based course. on what I've gotten, but also my knowledge and putting two and two together, right. being in this business. Then I, and so I am probably giving you what is true, you know, what, right. what the scoop is, but it isn't so much, you know, um, or this person. And I never like to do anything about someone being fired on the housewives. I'm like, I never say I want someone fired and I never want to like predict someone being fired because I think that's like shitty. Well, because you know, it's about, we're all trying to make a living. So yeah, you so don't want to like, cut someone's living off. I know. So when people, you know what I've also noticed too with the, the way these group, uh, these people work too, is they'll like, they'll be on a podcast or something and they'll talk about me and they'll say I um, threaten them in a DM or something. Right. And I'm like, what? And someone will send that to me, the little yeah. clip. And I go and I listen and I go, I can't believe this. I never had a beef with this person. And I go and I go back on our DMs and there's nothing, nothing like right. that. And I'm like, they want me to then clear it up on this show, which so is a much the, bigger audience. So they get the views. To say, right. hey, I had no problem with Joe Schmo. Right. Why are they saying this? What an asshole. And then they could go back and be like, ooh, okay, sorry. You know, right. and we can get, you know. And, and I'm they like, love that for the views yeah, and the Yeah, so follows. now I'm just like, no. You don't engage. Because, no, 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 Because I'm no. not giving you free publicity based on a lie. And like, I'm never threatening anybody or, right. you know, like, it's so dumb. I'm like. Pfft. Isn't your husband a lawyer? No, <laughs> he's not a lawyer. My sister and brother-in-law are okay, lawyers. Okay, so you have but lawyers? But he is very, very good. Lawyers will tell you. There's, don't ever put He could be a lawyer. Okay. He could pass the baby bar uh, way before Kim could. No, he is very good at reading contracts. He's very good at understanding things. So I'll say, can you explain this thing to me sometimes? Oh, good. You know, whatever. I need to get. Oh, yeah, like, and then, like, give me the cliff note okay, version. Wait, I got off yeah. track. So the book. So yes. this guy that I replaced at Julia Roberts' company, Mark, he went on to be book scout for all the big studios, and he's the one that brought my book deal. He worked for Judith Regan, and he brought my book to Judith Regan, who bought it. So I don't the even, one about the D girl, right? Stuff. I okay. only had met him for a minute, but he read my blog. So he's oh, like, "You okay. write D girl diary. I'm gonna get you a book deal." And they just done the premiere, which outed me. So he got it to Judith. Judith signed me. Then Judith got fired for the OJ book, right? Um, which was to remind people was she published the book. OJ wrote a book saying, if I did it, this is how I would have done it. <laughs> Which people, as you can imagine, didn't really appreciate. Yeah, I don't think Kim Goldman and her father so appreciated that, that or my the Brown publisher, family. So yeah. that's why my book never got published. But anyway, Mark went on to become a book scout for all the big studios. He still does this. And he eventually married a girl who is works for a publisher. And that's the girl who called me to say, I love your page. I love your moms are watching. I want you to do a trivia book for me. So she, Oh, so it was kind of her idea. It was her idea. I oh, didn't have great. any idea. And she said, I just feel like with your page. And I was telling her, I'm not really this encyclopedia. I've watched all the shows, but I'm not one of those people where you can say, like, on season two... I'm like, huh? I don't know. I don't have that brain. Yeah. I'm creative. I'm not like, So you know, did you use anyone to help? Pre-med. No, I use nobody. And you can tell when you go through it. But anyway, the point is, I did it for her because she loves my page and she knew that I would have like a lot of good insights. And so I wrote it for her. And now I'm doing a Vanderpump Rules one. So I'm almost done with that one. Um, so basically the idea of it is- I think this is so fun and so great. And, you know, I feel, and I don't feel like it was too easy. They're even hard, some right? of them, even yeah. some of them, I was like, I, tried. I don't know if that was Bali or if that was see this trip. I see it in my head and I'm like, "Ooh, that was a that was a good one. So, like, I think you could have a lot of fun with your friends on your girl nights. Right. And see how well people do. And there's different scoring and it's all the different cities. And um it's a good size. It's a good price. It's sparkly. I like it. This is what I think about it. I, I've always thought of it this way, is that there has never been a book 
that has everything in it. Like you can go to Dubai, you can go to DC, you know. Yeah. And it goes from day one to the last day when I wrote it. And so I feel like this is like the definitive, like have this at your house because now this is where it all is. Like all the big memeable moments, all the things yeah. that we've forgotten. And then I was thinking it'd be a good thing for BravoCon where you could get I think we should make these people sign it. Like make these housewives stop for a second. How much how annoyed would they be? I love it. How annoyed would they be like can Kyle because Kyle Richards is on the front. Kyle, can you sign my book? She's gonna want to kill me. Kyle gave you a quote. Kyle Melissa a fun Gorg and witty back. trip down Housewives memory lane. Very nice. And then Melissa Gorg is on and, the back. And and Kate Casey gave a great forward. Kate Casey's a good friend of mine. She has um, she's such a good writer in ex- kind of explaining Housewives, you know, in general right. in a really smart way. And then we have Margaret Josephs, Marisol Patton, Joanna Krupa, of course, because she's in my family. Alexis, she's Bellino. in your family. What do you well, mean? Well, she dated my brother for two years, and they're they're still when? Best, best friends. Um, pre Romaine. Because if you ever looked up my brother, you would see he looks exactly like Romaine. <laughs> she dated my brother, and then a guy looked just. So they were back in the day where they hung out with um, Slade Smiley. They hung out with um, Joe Francis. You know oh, how yeah, that all turned yeah. out. We know, yeah. I and know Kato yeah. Kalen is my brother's best friend. So, I know Kato yes, too. Yeah. I told my brother I was coming on here, and he was like, "Oh, Kato's gonna die because I love Kato." Yeah. Kato comes to like my family gatherings. That's how close we all are with Kato. And Joanna's the same. She's like a sister. So oh. that was the whole. And so we dated her for two years. Very serious. He picked her up. Literally from the airport from Poland and like got her her first like modeling gig for Piken, you know Piken. Oh. Uh, he used to do these things. Robert Piken, he's a big real estate guy out here. He used to do these. Oh yeah, I know Robert Piken. Of course, the bald head. He, right. Yeah, so Piken used to do these um, videos oh with my God, girls. This is like- I know. We, we Black, probably were at the same parties at the same the time. Past. Yeah. We went to the Playboy Mansion every Saturday night on the little bus because Joanna was always at the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, yeah. I went on the bus. So yeah. Pykin had these little videos where he would put girls on to sell his real estate. And jo- he hired Joanna. Her first job was like $2,000 to come on and be like, you know, hi, I'm Joanna. Bye. Her. And my brother started dating her immediately, like from the airport hang. I don't know where my brother stalks these girls out, but he finds them and he found her. And he's like, I got this girl. She's from Poland. I'm paying for her mom. I'm paying for Marta. I'm paying for the whole family, the rent. It's amazing. And I meet her, Heather. I He goes, I have to, you have to meet my girlfriend. She's amazing. And he goes, we're going to Sizzler. I'm like, hmm, interesting choice. I go to Sizzler. She's like, this is my favorite restaurant. She had like a thick accent at the time. And she was wearing head to toe leather with just little straps right over the nipple, like nothing else. It was like a bodysuit, but it was just like, boop. At Sizzler, she, of course, looked stunning. Like, I couldn't even, I was, like, mesmerized by her eyes. And I'm thinking. Yeah, she's beautiful. She's like, this is my favorite restaurant. I'm like, who the heck is this bimbo you've picked up? Because I don't know her yet, how sweet she is. She's amazing. But at the time, I was like, what was this girl that made you go to Sizzler and she's wearing head-to-toe leather? I'm not into it. I just saw a TikTok of a beautiful girl saying, I love Cheesecake Factory. She's from Australia. And she goes, and when I came back to Australia, every Australian asked her, did you go to Cheesecake Factory? (laughs) And they love it. And she's like, that brown bread and everything. I don't know. Like, there's certain places that that it's just unique to hear, I guess, if you don't grow up here. Right. Well, I I was fascinated. And that was my first impression. And then ever since then. And she basically didn't talk. She just pursed her lips and, like, held on to my brother the whole dinner. And I was just like, do you speak English? And she's like, yes, of course. And I was like, well, you could talk. You know, we have a big family of 10 people in my family, eight kids. We need to know who you are if you're going to date my brother. And he was driving a Maserati and living the life Where is the brother now? My brother? Yeah. He's in... The Dominican Republic, um, living in the Dominican Republic, selling, like, stem cells. Like, um, you can go to him to get cheap stem cells. I what do you do with stem cells? You can put them in your body to, to like, help you with things. Like, if you have, like, um, a chronic problem, they insert them. He goes, Thea, I got a, a million stemmies right in my fridge. You got to come down here for your MS. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these stemmies right in you. I'm going to cure you right up. I'm like, Eric, when did you become a doctor? Like, I don't Because he did. Um, He trained for Miss USA. You have MS? Yes. And how long have you had it for? So I got diagnosed three weeks after 9-11 when I worked for Julia. Oh. So Julia and J- and um, Elaine got me my doctor, who was, like, the most famous MS doctor in the world and, like, saved my life. Because I would be in meetings with Julia, Jennifer Lopez, Elaine, and I would be falling on the floor like my arm would fall asleep all the way up to the side of my face and I'd be laying down with the meeting like no no I got this I'm taking the notes and they're like are you okay and they finally sent me to the hospital like you have to get this checked out this is not normal and they diagnosed me and they took care of me I just want to say like you look great I would never know right. and for having it for 23 years you should share 
your knowledge. Maybe I do on my page. People. And your moms are watching. I have so yeah. many MS okay, people. Good. You I should, tell them. I'm sure you could direct people to some stuff. Yes. Yeah. The medicines they have now. They're in, but I'm, it's not your brother's stem cell? Why not? <laughs> my brother wants me down there so bad. But you Why don't, not? Because you don't understand how many... I'm not going to say scams. <laughs> Business endeavors my brother has pitched to my family. It, it, we are all so over it. He's like, listen, you guys, I'm into I'm in the First, he did the kids. Get your kid into the movie business. That was his business. Kids and teens. Okay, got, you look at. Oh, go to the, go to the mm-hmm. thing. And, uh, don't you want to be on Disney? Yeah, right. Right. And then you pay all that money. And he yeah. worked for the Brian Rotman. He did this whole thing. And then, <laughs> right, bar one. They were always up bar one. So he had this thing where he pitched. He would go to a, um, get a bunch of, we would scout the kids out at the mall. Every kid was a star. And come to the seminar, and he would stand up there. Now, my brother was. Wait, can I just say one thing? And then we go back. Because I thought about this the other day. So my mom and dad are realtors, and we, we d- did have agents as kids, and my sister did have the kids in the business. But my mom would do that to ingratiate herself to get the listing. No matter what the kid looked oh, like, my mom would be like, get that kid an agent. And then <laughs> yep. they'd be like, all right, I think you could sell our house. Yep. Everybody wants to hear that their kid can be a star. Right. Okay, my so favorite, you're at the mall sco- scouting out scout, the people. They yeah. come. I, this is what the scam that we were running was that um, O'Brien <laughs> Rotman, the O'Brien Rotman charged you $1,500 for the package. And what did the package it's include? It's like pictures and, you know, headshots and training. I mean, BS, right? Yeah. Um, you do get a manager, which is important, but the manager has 400,000 clients because they all go to her. So my brother's <laughs> pitch was, hi, so O'Bri- O'Brien Rotman, whoever the guy is, he, Eric Rotman, he would send my brother the people who rejected him. Okay. And then my brother would have us call and say, hi, like, I, I saw you at this O'Brien Rotman thing. I was just in the back, you know, looking. And I noticed, like, how amazing your kid is. But, like, what are they, crazy? $1,200? You shouldn't be paying more than $500 for this. Like, 500 max. Why don't you come meet my brother? He's a casting director because, by the way, he casted um, the extras for Biodome. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Polly Shore's movie Biodome. So he's a big casting director. Come meet Eric, and he's going to bring it your kid. And then the seminar my brother did, it was so gold. He would stand up there, and he'd be like, listen, parents, i got to tell you right off the bat. When I get your kid onto a sitcom, I'm sorry, but you're only going to get, because of Gary Coleman, 10%. So if they're making $450,000 a week, you're only going to make $45,000. The rest goes into a trust. And the parents are like, wait, $45,000? What did you say? My son's going to be... And they're like, here, That's take the way, my yeah. money. Right, that was the pitch. So they would, they would, you know, sign up for $500. And, and he, then they just never hear from them again. So he did... <laughs> I don't want to say that it wasn't completely legit. They did get a manager, but no. So he could only do it in each city for like a year because then he gets started getting the suit, the lawsuits. So he would move <laughs> from city to city. This is my brother. This, by the way, is Joanna Krupa's boyfriend. So don't take it up with me. Was his was right. Her, yes. And then they went out for two years, and then she got the Playboy cover, and my brother went to a party with her for the Playboy cover, and he met Dean Kane. Right. And Superman. Dean, and Dean Kane said to my brother, like, guess who I banged last night? And it was Joanna. That's his girlfriend. And that was the end of the relationship. But they're still best friends. We all laugh about the story now in our family. Dean Kane, Superman. And and is she and Brandy Glanville okay? Is Brandy Glanville okay? Well, you know this that's the what the happened T-Bell? with them. No, oh, the Oh the, the vagina. Yeah. My brother swears that um it that is, uh, Joanna this, Krupa's vagina yeah. smells like a rose bed. He swears. But they are best friends to this day, so he wouldn't say otherwise. But he is Well, sw- for people just to remind you what happened was <laughs> it was on the after show of what watch, watch What Happens Live, and Brandy just said, um, well, I was told by <laughs> Mohammed, or <laughs> Mohammed told Lisa Vanderpump, who told me that it doesn't smell like a rose. And <laughs> What I think the problem was is that, you know, and I've learned this now, but it took a long time, is you shouldn't even try to defend such nonsense. You should just don't right. give it any just say light. it's not true. But and she, she went, went hardcore, and they went back and forth for years, and I think they finally settled. But she was suing Brandy, of course. you know. And, um, That's and then and You don't then tell anybody, all, Mike. And then they were smells. all on the list – I brought it up because I thought I felt bad for everyone involved, but I did think it was just like such a kind of a funny, of you know. So every time, funny. like page six would write about it, and so then they would get on the um, they'd be deposed, 
to go and and like Andy was on the deposition, and then I think Mark Consuelos was because he was those he, transcripts. He was the co. Well, none of them ended up going. They got settled, oh. but then they would be annoyed. Like with everyone involved, because they're like, "Why? I don't want to fly to L.A. and be. Why are you deposing me? Like Annie Cohen and and <laughs> yeah. Lisa Vanderpump and everything." And then and then it was like, "Well, now we we need to speak to the gynecologist." And finally, I think they just <laughs> then they agreed, and it's obviously a settlement that we can't uh, right. that we are not made aware of. But um, oh my god! Well, my brother. It's a shame because has... I really think they probably could have been great friends. My brother has posted <laughs> on his just... little Facebook page. I mean, my brother's not a public figure, although he's like best friends with Cato and Janice Dickinson and all those people. But he's not a public figure. But he has posted on there. Here is my take on this. Her vagina smells amazing. I've never smelled anything like it. It's like you're down there. It's like. You know, she's she's just smells like flowers. And, I mean, he has gone in. He's been like, I promise. And we've been broken up for years. So, so maybe that, and that's why they're still friends today. Of course. Because that's some, He's very yes. big on the vagina smells lovely thing. And I think Joanna really appreciates that. Because he has personal knowledge. Do, do you knowledge. know if Joanna would ever want to come back to Miami? No, 100%. Okay. I, would she I ever, got a, would I got she ever go on anybody else's, like a Beverly Hills or something? I got a blurb for my book, and literally when I approached her, like I said, I'm texting her, like we're family, you know, she's yeah. part of our family. She said she didn't even want to talk to me about, like, this book is Housewives, I want nothing to Oh, do. okay. So she was like, and then I begged her as like, I pulled the family card, and my brother called her, and he was like, Joanna, you got to give it, it's my sister. And we've hung out, me and Joanna. She, so she gave in, but she did not, so she will, not only does she never want to come back to Housewives, she doesn't want anything to do with any of it. She's like very anti. Because she's married and a mom now, right? No, she's divorced again. She's, oh, she's a mom. She is a she's mom. a single mom. Oh, yeah. okay. So she, yeah, she has her life. She's in Poland a lot. She does modeling in Poland. She is just, I don't know what happened, what it is, but I can tell you right now, she is never coming anywhere near Bravo. You will never see her again. She yeah. didn't want to talk to me about You'll never it. see my face again. Yes, ever. I'm out of Ready. here. Um, well, thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm really glad you came out. Um, you guys should get it now. Order it. Tell them where they can find it. You can find it on Amazon. It's at Barnes and Noble and all those places. And books a million. But also, you guys, I'm going to try to sell some of these at BravoCon. Yeah, she wasn't there. going to, and I was like, Heather uh, talked me into it. I go, come on, girl. Like, no, I just was I trying to it, figure out logistics of how to carry books around because they don't let you no, come no, into I, the conference with like a bag, a no, I rolling think, suitcase. I think we're going to make a plan where maybe right. it'll be able to be sold right. in and around the facility. facility. And so you'll be seeing people selling this, and then you should buy it at BravoCon to get. I would say just get it before BravoCon. Okay, get it go on get Amazon. Get it and bring it in your bag and, and like our plan. And and me and Heather, because you can blame this on Heather McDonald, that we want you to really annoy the housewives and make every one of them sign. When you do your little photo ops, they'll sign right there. They're yeah. going to love this. They're going to love the extra two minutes it takes and the pen and all that. <laughs> They're gonna, And then you could tell them Heather McDonald and Thea D'Souza from Your Moms Are Watching told us to get this autograph. And they can't. What are they going to say? They're going to have to do it. And they're going to want to kill me. And it's going to be amazing. They're all going <laughs> to block me. And they're going to be like, you're the one that made that. You got the ink all over my blouse. And the girl with the fumbling pen. And I'm like, listen. And the person who could work their phone. No, exactly. I'm sorry. These little photo ops you wait two hours for we need to get some like ink on a book for that yeah. like, you, you get the one snap photo it comes out blurry you put it on your page this is for life so let's make all the housewives sign this book at BravoCon. so fun <laughs> and then um and then there's a chance you'll be coming to my show at the, the i want to go to juicy 4th. scoop on saturday that is going to be a live juicy scoop i cannot I, wait it is, um I can't wait. Check for it that. out. I'm so, so excited. I love the Juicy Scoop idea because we were talking earlier about how draining BravoCon is. And isn't it going to be so nice on Saturday after we're done with our whole day of panels and whatever to go sit and just laugh at Juicy Scoop? Like, at I the love Venetian. That idea. At the Venetian, which Look is at the spear. iconic, amazing. Go on the gondola, so have the I yummy think we're, food. I'm going to do that Saturday night and then I'll be there and I'm at Captain Lee's show. Captain Lee is doing a one man show at the um, Westgate, the, owned by Queen of Versailles. You know that. Yes, hotel. I. Oh, I know her. Uh, Jackie she's, will be there. Oh, I just wrote her. I'm like, are you coming? She's coming because the, the Captain Maybe Lee's Maybe she can show. come to the Juicy Scoop show too. Get her there. So she yeah, I love her. She's and so sweet. We've invited a few other Bravo Labs to come to Captain Lee's show. Like, I know Carl's coming, so if you want to get the scoop, just approach him. He won't mind. Make him <laughs> sign the book. Tell him that Thea and Heather McDonald Call said he needs to tell her else. everything about And now Lindsay. he's single. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he is single. That's right. So come to Captain Lee's show at the Westgate on Thursday night, and then it's there's a meet and greet. And the show, I wrote it. It's amazing. It's a, He does games with the audience. We're all about the games and the calling out stuff, and he'll do, like, his one-liners to you if you tell him something. It's 
it's amazing. We, I love the show. We did. We put it on at the Hard Rock in Florida, and it came out amazing. People were just. It was great. It was sold out. So you got Captain Lee show. You got BravoCon. You're making all everybody sit down and sign this. I don't care how long it takes. Approach them in the hallways. They love that. I approached. <laughs> I approached Heather at BravoCon last year, and she was like, "I'm going. I'm. Uh, I'm on my way somewhere." And I'm like, "But it's Thea from your mom's are. You know what? And you're okay. like down. Okay. The hall. So here's the thing. <laughs> That that what what made it hard is because um, when I was there, I it really got to a place where like I hadn't eaten for like six hours. But that's what I mean. And I and I have fainted on stage before, so right, I'm like I was like, and and I'm you know I love that people recognize me, but I unlike the stars that go in the golf cart behind and they're they're protected and everything. And so they could have their little bit of a downtime. That's where Captain Lee does. He and does then the it, whole Yeah, time. and then, but, like, people are asking for photos, which I absolutely love. But then when you say no, then people are like, she was rude. She was rude. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I how would I, I was to trying to you go to, hurry, I was right. trying to get to the next thing, right. just like everybody else. So that's why I'm like, listen, I'm just going to have my own thing in Las Vegas. Come to me. Take the but pictures of me. But that's why this book is all good. And then signed. go to the Bravo things and see your proper people at their panels and all that other stuff. But that is why it's going to be so annoying when they try <laughs> to get people to, when you know, Luann with her you know, crew is walking through and someone goes, You're, um, can you sign Darling, my... Darling, just come to the cabaret. They're going to love it. They're going to love it. But guess what? It'll be such so good for me because they'll see the book and they'll yeah. hate the book. But then, you know, no publicity is bad publicity. I'm into it. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I get the book. It, it is fun. Fun. I can't Thank wait. You. <laughs> well, your camera's there too. You don't have to oh, turn it. Sorry. <laughs> no one told me. Oh.